Okay, this is video four types of courses, and we're gonna look at board developed, board and content endorsed, category A and B, VET and life skills courses. All right, now it can be a bit daunting looking at all these different types of courses and how they contribute to an HSC and what you can and can't do. This video should make that a lot clearer for you. So the first type we're gonna look at are board developed courses. They are two unit courses that have a syllabus that's been set by NESA. They all have an HSE exam. Board developed courses are divided into category A and category B. All category A courses count towards an ATAR. However, only two units of a category B course can count towards an ATAR. So if we look here, here are all the, the courses that Mawari is offering next year. And these are all the board developed courses we're offering. If you see where there is an asterisk, that is a category B course. So if you're going for an ATAR pathway, you would only be able to select one of those category B courses. And you can see that they are construction, English studies, hospitality, information, digital media and technology, live production and services, mathematics standard one, and retail services. So if we look now at the, um, the requirements in a bit more detail, we see this. You need to study at least six units of board developed courses for the HSC. Right, now, that's a lot of different types. How do you work out what you need to study, which pathway that would get with you? Here we have um, this page in your Year 11 Subject Selection Prospectus, and we have mapped out all the courses that we offer. Up here in the red box, we have the, these are all the board developed courses. Then here on the left are the category A subjects. So they are the ones that always count towards an ATAR. And in the brown box, we have the category B subjects. So only two of two units from that list can count towards an ATAR pathway. Okay, extension courses. An extension course is a one unit course. It builds on the content of the two unit course and requires students to work beyond the standard of the two unit course. Where there is a second extension course, and we have those in English and Mathematics, the extension two course requires students to work beyond the standard of the extension one course. All extension courses count towards an ATAR. So if you see here, here are the extension courses that we currently offer at Mulroy High School, and you can see which years that they are studied in. Content endorsed courses. These are approved by NESA, however, they don't have an HSC exam. They contribute to the HSC and ROSA pathways, but they don't count towards an ATAR. So here we have um, the, the content endorsed coffee content endorsed courses offered by Maori next year, and that is Exploring Early Childhood, Numeracy, Photography, Video and Digital Imaging, SLR, Sport, Lifestyle and Recreation Studies, and Visual Design. So if we go back to the page in your prospectus where we have mapped out all these different courses, you can see down here at the bottom in the blue box, those are the content endorsed and board endorsed courses down there. Now we've put on there that there are little boxes so you can get your lead pencil out and you can tick the different subjects that you would like to choose and then you can see how that combination works, what kind of pathway that that give you and then you can rub it out and try different um, combinations to help you make that choice. Right, vocational education and training courses or VET courses. These are courses that have an HSC, they're a, they contribute to your HSC, they're an HSC subject, but you also gain a qualification. And that qualification is issued under the Australian Qualifications Framework. So you might get something like a Certificate 3 in Retail or a Certificate 2 in Kitchen Operations in Hospitality, depending on the course that you're studying. Um, most of VET courses have a mandatory work placement requirement. This means that for each year, you will need to go out for at least a week and work in that industry as part of your course um, to meet the requirements of that subject. 
things like construction, um, they can uh, give you an articulation into an apprenticeship in the construction industry when you leave. So these are really useful courses that can give you not only the HSC subject, but a very useful qualification as well. Um, some VET courses are category B, board developed courses. They have additional HSC outcomes and content to the, the qualifications for um, the certificate and it has an optional HSC exam. Two units of a category port course can count towards an ATAR. Some VET courses are board endorsed and content endorsed courses. They do not have an HSC exam, so they don't count towards the ATAR. And you can see here, these are the VET courses that we offer here at Mulwari High School. On the left, you have the category B courses. So if you chose to study one of those and sat the HSC exam, that can count to an HSC, uh, uh, that can count to an ATAR. Um, on the right are the content endorsed courses where you will get the qualification, but that won't count towards an, HS, uh, uh, an ATAR sorry, um, pathway. All right, so let's have a look. This is what the VET credentials will look like. So the, on the left, you have um, the transcripts and the certificates. So for this sample person, um, he or she has completed a certificate two in hospitality. On the left, you have the NICE certificate. In the middle, you have the transcript and there it lists all the unit of competencies that you have been deemed competent in and that you have, um, that you have achieved. On the right is a statement of attainment. So perhaps if you study the course and you don't, you aren't deemed competent in all the units, then you will not get the full certificate. However, you will still get the statement of attainment in the courses, in the units, sorry, that you have achieved. And once you have those, they can't be taken away from you. Another training organisation can't make you sit that unit again and the assessment for that again until the qualification itself has been superseded. So whatever you earn in a VET course, you will get recognition for. Okay, board endorsed courses. They're approved by NESA, but they don't have an HSC exam. They're mostly VET courses, so you will get the qualification that goes with that course. Um, they contribute to the HSC and ROSA pathways, but they don't count towards an ATAR. And if you see here, this is where we have the two um, VET board endorsed courses that we offer here at Mulwari High School. Life skills courses. So life skills courses are designed for students with special education needs that have need some kind of adjustment to the work or the coursework being delivered. They are board developed courses and contribute to the HSC. Life skills courses don't have an HSC exam, so they don't count towards an ATAR. So if we look here, these are all the possible HSC life skills courses that, can, that are related to subjects that we teach here at Mulwari High School. And as you can see, there's quite a few to choose from. Now, if you are interested in doing a life skills course, um, I have another video later on um, where we look at life skills courses in more detail, and that is video seven. There is a process to go through if you would like to do a life skills course or a life skills subject. Um, and that's just a process where, of consultation where you would speak to the head teacher of learning support, Mr. Bark, or the deputy principal, learning support, Mrs. Menzies, to get that started.